Pulgathon. Pulpo. Good morning, and welcome to the Hard Luck Show. I'm your certified host, Steve Lucky Luciano, and welcome to the Hard Luck Show. Sitting across from me is my co-host, is Chumahan Bowen, American Indian, elegant barbarian, Southern Californian, and here, the Hard Luck Show. Once again. Up a little bit, yeah, dude. Oh, Why? Right up on me, dog. God, man. What are you trying to count dude, his no, nose hairs? It's the on me, dude. This shit is on me, ah, partner. Man. Uh, and we've got Sean Lewis. That's right. Sean Lewis, audio, certified audio professional. Uh, oh, something, something. Old Blue Eyes got a little confused. Yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we got Big Dick Mike. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, what's up? Mr. and Mrs. Airbus. Hard luck showing the building. He might be missing a toe, but he's got a big dick. Something <laughs> stole him. <laughs> they showed it to the fucking end of his chile. He's Little got a big toenail yeah. on his dick. <laughs> he exchanged the helmet for a toenail. He looked like a shrimp now. Shrimp <laughs> Prawn, prawn cocktail. <laughs> what's up, baby? Man. Yeah, what's going on with everybody out there? Man. Fuck, it feels like forever since we've been back. Dude, I just got yeah, back from Texas. Texas has got crazy weather. Yes. Mm -hmm. You were in Texas not like what, no. two weeks before me? No, 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 no. I wasn't in Texas. I thought you were in Southwest. No, 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 no. Las Vegas. No. Utah. Simone. Oh, okay. But how was how was how was Texas? You know were what? They going crazy like Florida out there or what? Uh, nah, you know what, man? It wasn't shit. It was flat as fuck, though. I'll tell you that in Texas. You get to Texas, yeah. and you're like, where the fuck's the mountains around this motherfucker up in this thing? And, you know, it was like a family vacation with the in-laws. Plus, visited my sister. Happy birthday to Declan. He's one years old. Oh, yeah, and happy birthday to your sister, man. No, well, it's not a birthday, but, dude, they got a... Dude, we're all dumb. I'll tell you that right now. That money they got over there goes a long way in Texas, bro. They got my, big houses and big... My I sister's mean. house is so motherfucking big, it's disgusting. And, dude, her man just sells fucking... Uh, what do you call that? The fucking timeshares? No, he. Oh no, he upgraded from timeshares. Oh, he, he he used to sell timeshares in Vegas. Mm -hmm. All right, that ain't an easy gig. No, no. I went to Vegas. I asked no. him. I go, you ever get like people from India that come through there? <laughs> as soon as I said India, he broke a sweat because he's like, man, those people. They'll, they'll take a cheap fucking vacation and they'll happily sit and drink all the coffee and sit there and be like, okay, tell us more. All right, all. No, no, it's okay. We'll sit. And they'll wear me out. He went from that to fucking solar panels. Solar panels bought a two story, five bedroom, four bath, three garage house just outside of Dallas, Texas. Damn. I mean, it's still Texas. It's weird. Roads are weird in Texas. The curtilage is weird. Like, you know, you know when you go to another country and, like, you can kind of see, like, the sidewalks and the curbs yeah. aren't even? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's not wrong, but you can just, it's just off. So, right. anyway, that's that. We did all that whole thing. The baby had a hell of a great time. You know, Tigra likes fucking traveling. That's when traveling fool that kid. And then uh, came back. And right when I got back, it, I had that arbitration. Like Sunday, I got back Sunday. Monday was the arbitration. Did you have to come back Sunday and refresh? Huh. First of all, dude, I got that arbitration like two, like two weeks before it started. The guy came to me and he was like, man. I go, well, this is the retainer for something like that, bro. I, I have, I've got all these other cases. I haven't even, I don't even, I can't, how do I spell your name? What is it? How, what? He's like, this, 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 and this. I learned up that case. And yeah, I had to come back Sunday and refresh from Monday arbitration, which I thought was going to be like some simple thing between car dealerships and da 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 Fucking war, bro. A fucking sloppy, crazy, sock in the gut, all out. That you're still in now? No, it's over. It's over? Now. No, it's over now. 
It's over. And you came out with your hands, both hands raised. My client turned to me and he fucking, I mean, we won't know until two months from now whether or not we won or not. Mm -hmm. My client, um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how he did it. I, I mean, I, I don't know this for a fact, but I mean, you know, he'd have a little at lunch or whatever it was, right. you know, I can't really disclose. And then he would get more and more happy as the day goes. Dude. And I, he wouldn't leave the room. I'm like, how's he doing? Like, what's he got? Like, is he hidden a cup behind a fucking curtain or something? Like, sure. It wasn't no funny powder. No, no, no. Because he was like getting more and more earnest. You know, more and more sincere as the day would go on. Mm -hmm. So by the end, you'd be like, God bless you, sir. You know what I mean? But it was an extra sauce on it. Yeah. I'm like, where'd that sauce come from? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? But, um, yeah, so I went straight from family trip right into that. So that that that's why kind of if you look at that show, I was kind of laid back a little bit. Oh, yeah. Could you tell that I was kind of like hanging back, even though we had a, a Latina that had thick legs talking about yes. getting a massage parlor rub off? Anna, remember that? Yeah. Big, big old I remember that good. Oh, dude, I'll never forget that as long I as I remember that like, real good. Oh, bro. So, uh, so anyway, but what about you, partner? How's the uh, shoulder um, healing up, bro? Oh, that shoulder's healing, partner. Slow. What's going yeah, on, no, it's dude? Just slow, 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 uh, slow heal. Um, it's gonna take a little time. Um, How's that metal in the hey, bone, hey, bro? Hey, what the hell? How's that metal in the bone, dude? When it was raining, could you feel it? Like uh, when it was because it's like I got my ringer off and it's still ringing. Yeah, it's because it's getting a transmission from the metal in the shoulder. It's like okay, an so, um, Yeah, man, fucking, uh, we, uh, I got I'm about two and a half weeks post-op. I got this fucking sling on. It's a pain in the ass to sleep. I got nothing but complaints for you guys. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm grateful. I needed to have it done. Of course, of course. It's uh, rough to sleep. Again, shout out to Monique Rice. And she looked out. She's just been looking out for me this whole time. How do you yeah. shower with the sling on? Like, you got to take, take your shirt the, off? No, you take the sling off. Okay. And I've got, like, a surgical thing that's covered that you can't, like, water can't penetrate it. Right. For the incision. So that's there. And then I just shower, and I just don't spend too much time in there. Uh-huh. But I fucking shower, and then I come out, and it goes right back into the sling again. I keep that sling. Remember, like, back in the day, dude, when people would have a cast, and they'd, like, want to, like, go in the pool, and they had to put a trash bag yeah, around? Yeah, I it? did that. I had put a trash bag did around Did you do my that? Arms. Hell yeah. I went to the beach. God I damn. I went boogie boarding with the trash bag around <laughs> But yes, it's, uh, it, so it's kind of a pain in the ass. And then, I, I mean, at some point in time... You know, I, I got to let homegirl go back to work and do her thing. Right. You know, She's got, got a life to yeah, do. Yeah. So this week it was uh, about getting around and like fucking everything from grocery shopping to showering to like changing clothes or like doing stuff. Like, fuck, dude. They, what takes one hour in a day yeah. takes me about six. To How do. do you normally sleep? Do you sleep on your back? I might fall asleep on my back, but I sleep on my sides. Right. So like if cause no I side sleeping. On That's your, it. Everything on your back. You got to sleep every night on your back. Oh, no, no, no turning to either side. Do you ever wake up because like you moved on it and then it like the pain shoots up and wakes your ass up? Fuck. Or just the pain just shoots and I'll wake up and be like, fuck is going on there? Man. I a knife in my shoulder. But it's, it's, it's getting better. It's all good. It, we're slowly on the heel. Hopefully in two weeks, sling comes off. We begin... Uh, physical, physical therapy. therapy and for yeah. me that physical therapy is like three to four months is kind of what they've told me before uh -huh. i got a weight in my hand right so i'm kind of like all right let's get to that and then it's three four you know what i'm saying yeah yeah three four yeah. months so uh looking forward to that but once the slings off i'm gonna start on um maybe not a jog but like i'll be on a regular like fucking power walking you know, five days a week. I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm going to start. I've already started to clean up the diet. Um, once this thing's off, I'll start with, with crunches and stretches in the morning and like begin getting myself really back in order because it's been like, it's been like three, four months yeah. that I really just haven't done anything really. 
You know? Right. So uh, it's time to start. You look my good, though, kid. dude. I mean, oh, like thanks. you look chill. You look like you. If I took my shirt off, you wouldn't say that right now. Well, I mean, I mean, that's that's what goes for a lot of us in this room. All right, let's just mm-hmm. let's not bullshit around. Big big Mike and mm-hmm. old blue eyes probably take their shirt off, look like melted snow cones or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> look like Jackie Gleason's over here. Yeah. Hey, so um, but man, motherfucking busy, bro, and uh, and yeah, that's what's going on right now. Has anyone uh, has anyone hit you up about the uh, the Tough Friday show we had that one time? Does anybody say anything to you about it? The water show, the water fight, nothing. I got a couple people. I know what he said. Nothing to me about. Nobody. First of all, I'll tell you something. All right. Everybody either blamed water. Mm. People were like, "Fuck water, man," or they blamed old blue eyes for not being here. Mm. The bridge of peace over here. This guy. Mm. Nobody said anything other than that. They said, "Fuck water, blah blah blah." And then, and I was like, "I, I mean, whatever, dude. We we got busy lives. We got fucking shit goes off, and and my fucking and we just kept going." In fact, I was thinking about um, how professional we were. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, man. Because we had that discussion, and then right after, there was like not a resolution to it, and then we, there were, we was whatever. Then right after that, Albert came in, and we were like, we handled the show like it was just another show. Yeah. And now here we are back again. Yeah. Right? What the fuck? Right? Every once in a while, you got a little, little steam out the piston. Yeah, no big <laughs> deals, man. No big deals around here. Sean, what what do you what do you think about the show? I mean, yeah, you don't great. have to go into it. You liked it? Yeah, it wasn't my fault though. No, I know that. I mean, well, kind of it was, but all right. In some ways, it was actually all right. Well, let's just move on. <laughs> <laughs> Completely detached. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. I was not trying to. I was just trying to give everyone an update that we're all. Listen, this is the life we chose. <laughs> don't don't piss off Sean. <laughs> oh, 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 the don't nostril piss flare. that guy off, man. Oh, look, he's Because he's our to... sound guy. We don't want him storming out. <laughs> With his $10 cup of uh, coffee. <laughs> fucking scaring the fucking parking guy down there like he's going to almost oh. get his teeth knocked out or something. <laughs> he got locked in here. Don't get old kickboxer Sean back out. Ah, oh, bro. We like the audio genius. <laughs> so, the, um, but bro, we're going, I, if we're not in World War III, we, it is, we are going to World War III. China is sending rifles and body armor to Russia. Russia just fucked up one of our drones in the Black <clears throat> Sea. The Pentagon released video of it so the world could see what this fucking Russian... If you watch that video, this fucking Russian MiG comes right in and just fucking... It doesn't shoot it down. To shoot it down would be an act of war. What does it do? Well, it makes two passes. Did you see this, Sean? It makes two passes on this drone. It's an American Predator drone mm-hmm. flying clo- in, in Russian air... Or close to Russian airspace picking up data. Mm-hmm. Right? I don't know what they're picking up. Helping right. the Ukrainians, right? Look, and Zelensky's down there playing right. fucking Mario Kart. And fucking, so you can see it. The camera's pointed at it, and you can see the Russian MiG come up one time. It comes right at the thing, and it's doing one of those gas discharges. It's releasing all this gas, and I think they were hoping to knock the drone out of the sky with the gas release or whatever. Doesn't do it. Comes back for a second pass. Comes again. You can see the gas trail behind it coming out. Dumps gas on it, and then the screen goes blank for like a second and a half. When it comes back, you can see the propeller. One of the blades is all fucked up, and the MiG is gone. So I'm imagining that, like, for for sure, the Russian, whoever it was, general or Putin, whoever, was like, we can't shoot it down. If we shoot it down... Then it's fucking World War Three for reals. But if we recklessly hit it, it's not an act of war. So they're not going to retaliate probably. And that's exactly what happened. So you got that going on. You got Silicon Valley Bank going tits up, right? And then that's a major, that's a major. So Silicon Valley Bank. Yeah, break that down. Dude, that is a major motherfucking bank for tech startups. But when we say tech startups, we're not like talking about like 
you know, some dude sharing a house trying to figure out how to make like, you know, automated fucking bots that can, you know, predict popcorn or something. No, it's big ass fucking companies, big companies, companies you've heard of. I don't know all of them, but big motherfuckers. 90% are big ass tech companies that you heard of. <laughs> and um, so why does that bank? Sean, you're a tech guy. I would think that fucking that type of money is so deep that they wouldn't have a problem. Yeah, you would. Especially Silicon Valley Bank. I would think these guys got more money than everybody. Right. It's the bank like that Google? supports Silicon Valley. How fucking rich is that? The richest. Right. Or next to. I mean, what's more solid than that? Right? So we're not talking about mortgages. We're talking about a fucking tech industry. I mean, Amazon, Google, Jeff right? Bezos. Dude, we're talking about the richest guys in the world, right? Right. Automated sex robots, whatever, right? right, right? right. Sean, what do you know? What, do you know what happened at, 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 at fucking Silicon Valley Bank? Um, you were not at Napster. Really. You yeah. were you hid at Napster while they were trying to I, lay off people. I heard that they like <laughs> invested in bonds or something. Oh, and man. then uh, Dodd Frank was they they lifted the restrictions on Dodd Frank, and then now there's like better. <laughs> it's good. What I'm laughing because you're right, but it's like just kind of like the 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 I'm like maybe like the headline aspects of it, but it's right. I'm laughing because you're like well. I knew they got some kind of bonds. Yeah, it's because I don't give a shit. All really. right, kind take of. it easy. I'm not criticizing you. No, easy. I mean, I do, like I hear I, they invested Valley. in Barry Bonds baseball cards. I remember. Yeah, it's no, like, no, no, no. <laughs> not, not something I'm. I'm really like this, like you know, tickling my balls or whatever. Why not? I don't know. Give me, come on, man. They What's the real really thing? Do. Yeah, dude, you don't like rich people, huh? I mean, I don't give a. F another bank goes down. Like, who cares? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I mean, you ain't wrong. You ain't it's wrong. Like, like, what's it mean to me? Uh, yeah. Hey, mean? I gonna, still got a fucking... Yeah, yeah, that's my no Maserati, huh? Right? I got a little right. money in there. Yeah, what the <laughs> fuck I get? Oh, want me to cry for you? Sorry about that. Yeah. Oh, Elon Musk lost $10. All right. Oh, well, oh, I tell you, man, that motherfucker. motherfucking Silicon Bank get lands closer onto the doorsteps of... Uh, uh, you know, of people close to me or around, you know... Yeah, maybe around. Bay Area peoples. Yeah. So I'm, I'm definitely... Con you know, concerned with it, you know? Well, I'm concerned because it is true. They bought bonds and you generally, you buy these government bonds and, um, they bought long-term bonds, but okay. they over put money into these long-term bonds. And this was before the interest rates went up. The government sets interest rates, right? So you can't, you can't do any of these fucking loan sharking, right? That's you got it. The government says, look, we're setting it at 1.5%. No one's got an advantage, right? And it's going to encourage people like, you know, fucking Wells Fargo, whoever the fuck it is. They'll add their little, wet their beak on at 0.5%. So now it's like two or whatever. But everybody's kind of in the same thing. We don't need all this crazy bullshit. And the craziest part about the interest rates is how they've been flat for a long ass time. Because what happened in 2008? The Great Recession. Right? They're like, fuck it. We want credit eased up so people could spend money, buy all the fucking whim whams and fucking do, you know, whatever the fuck, right? Baba Lou's in the fucking. And then, right? It'll start the engine going and business will get going. Well, then everybody did start buying all this money. Now, everyone was extended on credit a long way out, more than ever before. Musical money chairs. Right? When's the music going to stop and who's going to be the one fucked? It's basically what the game everyone was playing. Silicon Valley Bank, right? So they had it all in these bonds. Probably the worst thing to have when interest rates start to go back up because the Fed is saying we need to calm down inflation. Now we need people to stop spending money. When that happens, the credit lines that all business use to make payroll... Right? Like, you know, construction sites all the time. You got to borrow money to pay the workers to get, you, because you don't get all your money all at once from the, the big guys, right? Mm -hmm. So you can do all this bullshit. You pay. When that credit dries up, all of a sudden the banks are lending way less money. And now a lot of people can't make payroll. The tech companies couldn't make payroll through credit 
they had to start taking their deposits out of Silicon Bank. And like when you take your money to the bank and you deposit it, they give you like a little receipt. You're like, oh, you got ten thousand in there. Thank you very much. They take your ten thousand dollars. It doesn't just sit there in an account. They take the ten thousand dollars and they buy up bonds. That's how they make their money. Investing it in all kinds of stupid bullshit, my pillow and all this shit. Then, right? Then, if everybody at the same time says, oh, we need our hard money back, and you won't have the cash. And Silicon Valley did not have the cash on hand. They couldn't give people their money back. And that started a small run. When that happened, Silicon Valley had to sell those bonds at a loss because the interest rates went up. So not only did they not have the cash, but now they were losing money just trying to like sell off these motherfucking bonds. And all of a sudden they were going tits up, tets. And the regulator stepped in when that's, and a real bank run started in Silicon Valley Bank. We're talking about the bank that holds the keys to the tech kingdom. And that's when the regulator stepped in on Friday and we're like, we're shutting it down. You can't take your money out. Nobody can do shit. Freeze, motherfucker. And they took a look at it. Now, the problem that everybody was worried about over the weekend is, is that the government is supposed to insure $25,000, $250,000. That's the limit. But most of the people that had that money in the fucking bank, we're talking $100 million, $200 million, $300 million. So what, right? Imagine Jeff Bezos has got... One billion dollars in that fucking bank, and the Fed's like, "Well, we'll insure two hundred fifty thousand of it." You could probably shop at Whole Foods maybe once, mm-hmm. twice, right? It was a big problem, and a lot of those tech companies were companies that mm. were doing military shit for military purpose, national security. The Pentagon over the weekend stepped in. And they looked at all the depositors. Out of everybody to step in. The Pentagon? Yeah. Yeah, the Pentagon did. The like, out of all this money shit, mm-hmm. the Pentagon goes over there. The Pentagon went over there to work out deals with companies that had tech that was related to military shit, right? Drone shit, maybe. Satellite shit. Shit that could predict. Do they've got tech in this country that, can, that will know when... Our enemies' nuclear missiles are being fueled. Mm. It takes enough, yeah, it takes enough time for these rockets to get fueled, and we have enough tech and satellites watching. It gives us a, like a 45 minute advantage over all of our enemies. And they can't just fuel, you can't just put gas in a fucking nuclear rocket and just leave it. You can't even do that in a car. Right? You can't just let gas sit in the car long enough to turn the water or whatever the fuck it is. So they have to bring in, and it's big fuel things, and we know that. So that's what we do. We watch the fuel. All that kind of tech, right? So the Pentagon steps in, and it's kind of like what happened in the drone situation. When that Israeli-born dude built that drone company and DARPA seeded him just enough money to allow him to continue to develop the concept but not get too big. And then they pulled the funding and he went bankrupt. Then an American aviation company came in and bought all that shit for pennies on the dollar. And then they just put that guy on salary. That's what they do. That's how it works. That's how it works. That's a predatorial investor, right? For sure. Right. For sure. And in an open society like we got, right? I'm like pretty goddamn sure that there's no way that it's not a coincidence that that we're decoupling all of our shit from China and pulling out investments from China. The the air balloons that we shot down, we found five Chinese tech firms associated with that. And what happens is people don't know this, but what happens is is we have all of these like like trade what? deals and shit with China, uh-huh. right? And so we share tech, right? And China was real interested in sharing our tech, right? Because they were going to try to steal that. We know that. We don't care. Whatever we're allowing them to steal, I'm sure the Chinese already know this, but like, we wouldn't let them partner with us on something we didn't want them to have or know they could have. But at the point that we wanted to like stop funding anything that they got, 
we couldn't just break the deal for no reason. There's probably a penalty. Like if you had a, a business deal with another company, if you broke it, there would be some kind of penalty, right? I guarantee you shooting those balloons and then saying, well, it was a national security thing. There's a national security clause in those contracts, I'm guaranteeing you, that if it, there's some kind of aspect of war, national security, then nobody has to pay a penalty. Pay back. Of course. Of motherfucking course. Of course. It has to be. It has to be, bro. So the same thing with these bankruptcies for these banks, right? So we know where all of the, there's Chinese companies that are at Silicon Valley. And probably Chinese companies that are behind Taiwanese fronts. And Russian companies that are behind French fronts. And we, I'm sure we know all about it. And I'm sure we're like fine, you know, up to a point. Nothing serious, serious is in there. And I'm almost convinced like that at some point where, the, where everything was headed, we were like, well, we're going to have to let the Silicon Valley Bank go tits up. We'll go in and rescue whatever companies we want to rescue. And the ones we do rescue... They're going to have to, now we run you. And you're going to have to fucking play our game now. Remember how we let you have all that credit? Remember all the economists and that Shark Tank bald-headed prick? Remember, they were all telling you, like, how is this possible? This is crazy money. You know, that Kramer fuckface. All those assholes, right? They were kind of right. It was never a lending situation this far out. Remember how we let it keep going? Well, now it's over. You can still have your fucking Bugatti, mm -hmm. but now you're going to have to fucking do what we fucking tell you. And we own that now. It's our tech now. Sorry. It's... <clears throat> Go ahead. Have your party. Fucking fuck your bitches. But this shit belongs to us now. Guaranteed a thousand percent. Yeah. There's no way. And that's how it works in a capitalist Western free society. It seems like it's free. Right. Until you're on credit. Once you're on credit. Then you got to play by, by what the banks are doing and what Congress allows the banks to do. Why would Congress lower or raise the standard? You know, right? They're like, oh, well, don't worry about it. Guaranteed. Worry about it. Well, I mean, if you're in the United States and you're making a ton of dough, at some point when the Uncle Sam comes a calling, you just can't say no. And you just got to live with it. Yes. Or look at what happened to Jack Ma. China. He was he was the big rich fuck over there in China. Remember Jack Ma walking around debating Elon Musk at the fucking, you know, Illuminati forum or whatever the fuck it is, right? Man, he was running around giving pep talks and motivational speeches and all this shit with that crazy cranium. Then, right, he made one criticism of the People's Republic of China on something and he disappeared for two motherfucking years. Gone. I mean, without an explanation. Like, where's like, he at now? Oh, he came back. He came back. He's on Zoom, talking to rural <laughs> peasants in China, and he's a much. He's more mellow now. He's yeah. mellowed out. <laughs> yeah. He. Yeah. So. So that's what's going on. Walking now. around like George McCain, uh, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Can't raise that arm. Right, right. Weird, yeah. something, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Got one of those shoe horns that's like three feet long because he can't bend over, oh, so he can put his shoes on. Oh yeah, bro, hurricane. You better believe it. So yeah, dude. Yeah. So that's that's what's going on. And so, uh, dude, if we're not in World War Three now, I am promising you, it's only it's getting crazier. They're also, uh, I don't know if everybody kind of picked up on this whole thing with like, did anybody catch what they're doing with um, all the cartels in Mexico? What are they doing? They're labeling, I think, the top 12 families, cartel families in Mexico, terrorist groups. They're oh, labeling yeah, them yeah, and yeah. pushing the bill for them to be labeled as terrorist groups, which in turn means then... That U.S. can use U.S. forces to go in to Mexico and launch raids, attacks, uh, bombings of fucking super meth labs and th th this and that with or without uh, Mexico's government agreeing to it, which um, I don't know. Like, the, 
it sounds crazy that all of a sudden they're deciding now that these that this is terrorist. They can put it on like the fentanyl and all that, but for some reason, for some reason, I just got a good feeling that they could do anything like that, and we still won't see a difference in the fucking drugs in this country. I, I, I yeah, just, I don't believe any of that is going to stop it. And I like I said something earlier too, like. Who's to think that we just you automatically hear people saying, well, China's sending over all the fentanyl and now they're making the fentanyl in Mexico and the super labs with the super meth and the da, 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 and it's coming here. To, who's to say that America's not making this shit? Who's to say these super labs ain't already been in effect in America? They're just going to call the fucking cartels terrorists so that they can just get rid of the fucking competition. They already sure. got this shit out. Maybe that's a whole big lie that all this shit is coming up through the border. Maybe they're the scapegoats and we're saying maybe there is no super labs. Maybe that's just they find the lab every now and then out in the jungle and they take pictures of it. like I haven't seen any of these fucking super, super labs like. There's yeah. plenty of shit in America. We don't know what it looks like. There's plenty of sides of mountains opening up and they're hiding UFOs and everything else in that motherfucker. <laughs> There's all sorts of places we can't go for miles and miles. It's fucking closed off. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, sh they assassinated fucking JFK on national TV in front of the world, bro. Come on, man. In Dallas. In Dallas. Like, you guys... Like, this just may just be a whole... And I mean, you, I have to look at things from those angles. It could all just be a big, big facade. What if they, they were never fucking making meth and fucking... Fucking down there, you know? But they're making the meth here. Everything they need to make the meth is right here. They can get it. Shit, they made a TV show and showed everybody how to do it. Just get an RV with a fucking white fucking chemistry teacher. They don't need fucking Mexico. Think about it. Yeah, that's true. Think about this. Go this, ahead. I'm just going to say it in one second. Do sentence. it. You got to go to some barns in Mexico where nobody's looking to make fentanyl? Now, bullshit, man. I don't believe that for a second, dude. No, I don't you're believe making, that for one second. You're making a lot of sense because when they were looking, so, you know, Oxycontin went out. What's that? That's made by a U.S. company. Yeah. Huh? Huh? And when it went out, right, the doctors that were putting it out in those facilities were losing a percentage of them all the time. They knew they were, oh, they, one of the reasons why they had to settle the fucking lawsuits in this fucking, oh my God, Chicky McGee, is because the company that was pressing them was pressing more than what was being prescribed. In well, America. Bro, it's the same thing as what you said about the guns. Do you know how much Oxycontin was found in Europe and in Canada? Right. Do you know how? And it was coming from these American labs. Of course. Those dudes were making huge fucking narco deals. For they were, they're a cartel. Sure. Right. For sure. The gun comp, I, the gun company, it's the same thing with the guns. Who knows how deep this shit runs, Dude, bro? How, listen, 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 listen. Blame fucking Mexico. They're right over the border. Let's blame them for everything. Why not? They're right, right there. Right. I mean, look at the country. You can see it's all this murder going on. Of course, they're using American guns. They throw duct tape on it, a couple yeah, stamps. Yeah. Load up a fucking truck. It's all baking powder. We just need it to look like that. Hey, look what we just confiscated. It's not even coming out of. They just show you a hole over there in New Mexico, and you're like, look at that. It's a train tracks underneath. They're running tunnel. every day. Dude, Chop think em. about that. How easy of a story is that to paint? Then they put out this fucking thing, Narcos, season seven. Everyone already buys it. And everyone's like, yeah, of course. It's fucking man. What are you talking about? We admit a little wrongdoing. We do, oh, well, we accidentally killed Kiki Rodriguez or whatever the yeah, fuck his name yeah, is, right? Yeah. Oh, we did that. That's true. Well, we're evil too. But really, right? Fuck that. You're right. Bullshit. Bullshit. I think maybe, I, I really, really honestly believe that, you know, they're, I believe there's a huge fucking marijuana going on, buying, or buying a marijuana, until mm -hmm. just America just got so good at it, we don't need their marijuana. Mm -hmm. We grow the best weed here now. Right. Hydroponic. Hydroponic, whatever. Right. Then there was the cocaine, and the cocaine, I believe that, okay, yeah, there were some things, 
But I think kind of after that was established, they just started. I feel like they've started to put in a narrative. I just don't see why anybody needs to go deep down in the mountains of Mexico right. to make fentanyl press pills or crystal meth. Dude, it's a synthetic opioid. That's what right. do you need a fucking? You don't need plants. And who would be able to even know what that is? Is you could have a lab in America that's uh, producing all of it, and nobody know, even knows it's coming out of that motherfucker. Paint Costco on the outside, and we think it's a fucking warehouse. So I don't know, man. I just find it, I find it kind of crazy. It is. And what if, what if it's, and what if it's the way where they're, where they're like, you know what? What if they are established down there? Maybe they're like, you know what? We're done. We're gonna kick all those motherfuckers out. We're gonna play. In, we're gonna place our own people down there For sure, to run bro. that shit. They yeah, and then hey. they they keep on shooting the one hey. place they burn down. They <laughs> shoot it from fucking twenty different angles, and right. they're like, "We're burning all these." They're not really burning them down. Uh, they're just kind of they're doing burning a, that one down. Move, they're changing all the employees <laughs> over. Right. Everybody's getting let go it's right now. It's a retrofit in case there's an earthquake. They're hop like, in the oh, back. No, 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 no. We're giving out bullets in the back yeah. of the head. Hop in the back, you know? <laughs> right. Right? Hey, listen, check this out. Yeah, how is it? Let, let me ask you this. Maybe you can riddle me this, Big Lux. How is it that... Kurtz down there. Fucking put Kurtz down there. God damn. Right. Colonel Kurtz like a snail on a razor blade. Right. No, listen. How about this? How could it be... Okay, maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm a little fucked up. How could it be that we are having to declare a war on drug terrorism? It's out of control. And then, but Elon Musk can open up a Tesla factory in Mexico too. How is that possible? Is it, yeah, isn't he, he building is. like the biggest he fucking is. thing now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh it's, it's a, like a it's whole, a, oh. isn't it like apartments and homes and yeah, all the, sorts of yeah, weird shit? Yeah, it's called Mosquito. Sex. Yeah, 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 sex dolls on chain. But no, right, for real. Right. How they can is that, live down there and all that, right? How can Elon put Tesla in Mexico and then at the same time, it's the craziest narco state you've that ever imagined? Come on. And you've got Mexico already making statements. The president and everybody's saying we're, the, the Mexico is safer than the United States. And you know what? They ain't wrong. Right. Oh, Listen. What's That's what what's, saying. We're let me way tell you, safer down here in Mexico hey, than you guys are up hey, there. Hey, let me tell you that. something. Let me tell you something. Right, right. What's more dangerous than an American elementary school? Nothing. Right? Nothing. Nothing more dangerous. And it's not only is it... Listen, this is how you know this shit's fucked up. There's nothing more dangerous than an American public school... And we don't say shit about it. Like, we're, like, living with it. We're like, yeah, yeah. And then we look at Mexico, and we're like, well, that's crazy. Three people got kidnapped. Can you imagine? Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine? Fuck, how do they deal with it down there? <sighs> and then here, fucking JFK Elementary, and a bunch of kids get sh mowed down. And then we've got people running out after they're mowed down to say, like, oh, we can't control guns. Are you crazy? It's constitutional. I got the paperwork right here. It's insane. It's insane. And I'll tell you something else, too, man. I guarantee you that part of it is a national security thing where we tell whatever, whoever we install or whoever's ready to work with the United States in Mexico, there will be somebody because uh, those folks, we're going to task them with fucking up any of our enemies that try to infiltrate through the South. Your job will be to be a dangerous buffer zone. That's what they're going to turn Mexico into? Yeah. Oh, for sure, bro. It's the Monroe Doctrine. It's been in fucking force since like 1825, President Monroe or Secretary Monroe, some motherfucker. But basically, the doctrine is this. Anything south of the United States, the United States has to control, manipulate, and make sure no enemies, right? Like maybe some people from Germany circa 1945 squirted out. Mm -hmm. We don't need that taking root down in South America. Right. If it does... 
because we don't need enemies coming up that we have to make it so that every country that is in south of our border and north actually we got to make sure that they're ready to play ball with us and if they're fucking around we can't have that because we can't because think about this russia right imagine and, and i'm not i'm not for this i'm just saying just as a thought experiment think about this imagine ukraine right is mexico Imagine if what was going on in Ukraine over Russia was going on. What if Russia and a bunch of China and everybody else was helping Mexico fuck with us? How long would we tolerate that? Right? Right? In the news, shit like, oh, Russia just sent over a whole bunch of fucking anti-tank fucking rocket launchers. We'd be up in the fuck that. Oh. We'd be up their ass. Oh, in that ass. Yeah. Just stomping through that motherfucker. So, yeah, I'm with you, bro. For sure. For sure. I think you want to know something? Uh. If I had to guess the way that I've seen most of these fucking incredible political schemes go down. Yeah. It ain't going to go down just one at a time, bro. There's going to be simultaneous shit going off so that you're looking one way. I'm looking another. Mike's looking this way and he's looking that way. It's going to go down. It's probably already happening simultaneously and we don't even know it. But I have a feeling that part of the whole way all this goes down is like there's like a, a level of confusion, a blanket of confusion that's thrown over everything that we do. Right. Confusion. Confusion. (laughs) especially if the u.s got their hands in it you know they'll dress some shit up like they're probably already they've probably already started dressing the stage for this years back get what i'm saying oh dude you know what i'm saying that's how they're moving hey man hey what do you think about this though think about this you're right okay that is the way that they're moving right and you think about all this ai talk that you know this chat gpt and the bug and mama but you got to imagine that probably 20 years ago, they had some capability to run sophisticated programs that could think through game theory shit, right? The Pentagon. I mean, really think about this. You're a fucking general at the top of the game, okay? You like cigars and you fucking play golf and you were in Nam, man, all right? But you're the top. You're the top of the tops. And you get all the reports. You get the reports about China. Right? Man, all of them. All our enemies ready to stab us in the back just like we're ready to stab everyone else in the back, okay? And then, yeah. And then some fucking pencil neck geek, right, comes up to you and says, General, we just created a program that can run all the simulations AI. We just beat Big Blue. Right? How long does it take you to go, how about you put that motherfucking thing into thinking about what the next 20 years is going to look like and what we got to get ready for now? Right? It's probably actually stupid to think that humans are the only ones gaming out all the various scenarios. No, they're not, bro. Right. They've already, that's why you have your think tanks and all that shit. They're right. about five steps ahead. Maybe 25 in the United States, bro. We don't like to think of it this way because we're not raised as Americans to think about it this way. But I promise you, the the country that came up with the internet, built computers, all that shit, the first the, applic- the country that had two fucking buildings dissolve in New York City. The country yeah. that dropped two fucking big fat man and little boy on fucking yeah. Japan yeah. melted the fuck out of those people. <clears throat> The, the country that beat the Soviet Union in the arms race because after my wife, dude, right? So we're taking the bar and we're expanding Ovano Bowen, Ovano Bowen, Hawaii, California, right? And my wife and I are like looking at a fucking condo in Hawaii for a little, blah, 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 right? Papaya, some black coffee, Kona. What the fuck? What am yeah. I, a jerk off? Right. So we go over there, Papaya right? Papaya and Kona. So I tell my wife, I go, hey, what about these green lasers that China shot down from the satellite on fucking Hawaii? She's like, what? And they did. They shot some green lasers. And it was like for like a, a split second, but like 
to try to imply that they're trying to figure out some targeting shit for nuclear bombs. Then my wife's like, what in four people? She said, what if, right? What if, why should we buy in Hawaii? They're going to nuke it. And I was like, listen, first, number one, Asians love Hawaii. They ain't going to nuke that. Okay. They love it. Second, <laughs> it's true. Second, I go, there's not going to be any nuke. I told her about the fuel thing. And then I had her. I'm like, think about it. Do you don't think that like, I, I went, went through the whole thing. I go, how many people at the top are running the U.S. military? Ten? Yeah, ten. All right. Of those 10, how many do you think haven't thought about whether or not Hawaii is vulnerable to a nuclear attack? Seven? I mean, think about Pearl Harbor. That happened, mm. right? And I explained to her, we beat the Soviet Union because not only, because she was like, well, then why build the nuclear weapons if you're not going to use them? And I was like, well, because the way we used them was through spending. That was how we zoomed. We outspent them. We beat them economically. And one of the reasons why is because not only did we build the nukes, but then we started building the satellites. That's what GPS is. GPS was set up so that we could put a net around the world and figure out which way these fucking nukes are coming. Long before these fucking vodka drinkers could get it off the ground. Blah, 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 blah. So, so what I'm saying is, is like, what are the chances that the people that were doing that in the 80s Reagan, fucking Bush Sr. What's the chances that, that, that they don't got chat GPT already gaming out all the fucking shit? All right. There's no way. And I bet you one of them was turn Mexico into a, a dependent narco state that we could blame everything on, use as the heel, make uh, individuals yeah, rich. We'll go down there. We'll bring the drugs over there. We'll fucking have, we'll, we'll line up everybody so we can get the drugs in and we'll put it all on Mexico. Yeah, for the Americans. It, Mexico yeah. knows the deal. We're not right. saying that. And the rest of the world and, knows that we're the And asshole. everybody also knows we're the big number one consumer. Right. And, who, and America knows that we're the number one consumer. We've been knowing that. How successful was Nixon's war on drugs? Right? Cleaned up the streets, huh? Hard to fight the war on drugs when the CIA is bringing mm. crack right into L.A. Yep. yep. Right? Yep. yep. Right? Black Panthers, baby. Co-Intel Pro. Learn something, young person. Yep. Right? Yeah, I'm straight. <laughs> no, but think about that, though. So, so at what point, right? I mean, that, that, that must just be part of the script. Like, and who was it that raised the visibility of Mexico as being the bad guy? Which recent president was the one that just took it to another level and made it super public? I don't, and dog, uh, and to think that maybe uh, some Colombians were just like fed up with trying to get all these kilos up in Miami. Right. Somebody met, started talking in prison. Oh, I'll introduce some people in Mexico. We can bring them through Panama, up through here. And then what? All of a sudden, remember? We'll do all this so we can pull a supply America. With all these drugs. And we'll make fucking one quarter of what they make off of it. Let's do it. Come Dude, on, and and think about this. <clears throat> Keeping um, a socialized medicine here. Like, healthcare for everybody, bro. Like, there's not a single reason in this country why every American couldn't have a blue chip fucking health system. Really. I'm not kidding you. You would even control litigation costs if you did that. Really think about that. You say, everybody's cool, man. It's like, no big deal. It's part of your natural birthright as an American paying taxes. And having to, you know, fucking... Eat your fucked up poison food. Yeah, man. You're fucking McDonald's. Your FDA jokes. FDA yeah. jokes. Yeah. Who do you think approved fentanyl as non-addictive? Yeah. The FDA. No, you can make fentanyl. You just have to go through us. Right. <laughs> you can poison everybody. Just go through us. Just give us ours. Right. And you can do whatever you want. Right. And that's exactly what happens. And then they make the knockoff fentanyl wherever they want. Right? Wherever they want. Shit. You might not even know if that knockoff fentanyl is the one that actually gets doled out and sold at American prices from the regular folks. Imagine the fucking profit, the upcharge on that. Right? 
especially during this time when we let go of all of the cheap ass labor that we had going on over in China because we're going to go to war now. Well, we need something to buttress up the profits. All right. We won't look too closely. I mean, a fucking pill's a pill, right? I mean, give me a break. That's why they do the generic shit. Make it over here and we don't know. You don't see. You make pure profit. No problem. <laughs> that is what's going on, bro. That yeah, is. Yeah, and they are yeah. gearing up for a serious. There is going to be some serious conflict coming. No doubt about it. Yeah. And, uh, and I actually think it's because China. Look, at, I'm going to say something that people. I think it's because China knows that its window of opportunity for grabbing control of the globe or being a heavy duty player is closing. Oh, uh, for sure. It, the pressure's on them right now. They know it's closing. I was looking at. Uh, Why do you think Russia already rolled over? No, I think that Russia too. Like Russia's fighting. It, it, so it's not Russia, it's Putin. I don't think the Russians themselves are tripping that hard, right? Fucking who gives a shit? We're all in NATO. Like, why would yeah, I care? All those chicks want to come move over here. Right, man, maybe. Exactly. Marrying a rich, they ugly love, fucks. Uh, yeah. Fuck American lifestyle. Exactly. Going America. to clubs, fucking looking for Kim Kardashian, wherever she's at, right? I'm going to live that I bet life. you if I offered a one-way ticket to the Russians, I bet you fucking 80% of the fucking country would leave. Hey, how many, exactly. <coughs> how many American <coughs> women are moving to Russia? I don't know any. Hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> if they move there, it's because they got caught up in white slavery or something. Right. That's the only way. They're in a shipping container. Ain't none of us running out to Russia. <laughs> right. Or China, for that matter. No. How, hell who, no. Right? Or North Korea, for that matter. Oh, I mean, fuck that. Man, you know, South Korea for like two weeks for the fucking barbecue, and then it's back. Right? <laughs> for all you can eat barbecue. Even Europe, dude. Right? How many people, they want to go to Europe, see it, hang out, but live there? For the next 20 years? Uh, I can't comp compare on this. Who what really? Russia and fucking China? Who's running? The, I, I don't know. But anyways, I, I, I hear what you're saying, man. I don't know. Right. So what I'm saying is, is like the window's closing for China. That's why it's getting started. And the window's closing for fucking this episode, too, huh? Oh, here goes the window. It's here, closing. The window's closing. What's up? Oh, Blue Eyes is closing. Yeah, he is. All right. Well, that's good. Okay. All right. All right. Shit. Oh, well, listen. Yes. www.supermaxhardware.com. Peep us out. Yeah. Cookies.com. Cookiessf.com. Yeah. Vibes, papers. Dot com check us out uh -huh. we're over here at the bolt yeah alien studios tonight yeah so big shout out to um uh to bolt cbd alien cbd yeah and uh thc free but it might get you high might get you high heavy melter mm -hmm. and a uh, big shout out to enzo's pizzeria hey fucking man eggplant parmesan sandwiches that you sent over uh, <sighs> classic chicken caesar Fantastic. Fucking what are you, Mama Unbelievable. Luke? Get over here. And my, my, my what is it? My Najou? Yeah, I don't know. My <laughs> Najou. Najou. My Najou. Najou? Najou? Najou. Najou. Yeah. Nina. Shout, Nina. Big shout out, right? The hair products. The treatment, uh -huh. right? And rub, rubmaps.com for rub and Anna tug. special. Yeah. If you type in Anna, 10% off. <laughs> rub and tug. Rub and tug. No, yeah, rub and tug. What you got, Mike? What you got? What do you guys got? Here you go, Mike. Come yeah. on, my, my guys. Just press right and step on the. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you, sir. And uh, a vulnerable and LLP. You could drop your entire case on me in two weeks. I'll fucking have them fucking running for the hills. Don't worry about it. Indians got a mind like a steel trap. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Worth every penny. Yeah. All right, go ahead. What you got? www.hardluckshow.com. Ooh. Uh, sounded kind of. Yeah. Yeah, what is yeah. that boy? You like that? <laughs> yeah, you, oh, you yeah. got you got you, you like on, you got anything? I did it over on Okay, beautiful yeah. man. Well listen. Yeah. That is the uh World War F World War Four Cartel show. Yeah. Coming to you. Great Have a great day. Have a great week. And uh don't remember, Mondays and Thursdays, the hard luck show. We're out of here. Peace. Hey. What's the fat boy? What's the fat boy? Hey.